Welcome to Lecture 9, Section 2.2, Properties of Metrics Operations. We are using the text Elementary Linear Algebra by Ron Larson, 7th edition, Sengage Learning. This is Dr. Gilbert Iyabi. Theorem, Properties of Metrics Addition and Scalar Multiplication. Let A, B, and C be matrices and alpha beta be real numbers then the following are true number one commutative property of addition i.e. a plus b equals b plus a the associative property of addition a plus parenthesis b plus c equals parenthesis a plus b plus c the associative property with respect to multiplication in the sense alpha beta parenthesis a equals alpha parenthesis beta times a the number one multiplied by the matrix a equals the matrix a and we have the distributive property alpha into a plus b equals alpha a plus alpha b and we also have another distributive property alpha plus beta a equals alpha a plus beta a now I'm going to prove just one of uh, these properties and then we would move uh, forward so let's see which one to prove okay let's prove property number two a plus parenthesis b plus c equals a plus b parenthesis and then plus c proof let a be the matrix defined by a i j B the matrix defined by BIJ and C the matrix defined by CIJ. Then the left hand side equals A plus parenthesis B plus C. That equals AIJ plus parenthesis BIJ plus uh, CIJ. Now using the definition of matrix addition, BIJ plus CIJ would give us this one matrix BIJ plus CIJ, all of that as a matrix. And then again, using the definition of matrix addition, we have AIJ plus parenthesis BIJ plus CIJ. And since AIJ, BIJ, CIJ are real numbers, and there is associativity in real numbers under the operation addition, this becomes AIJ plus BIJ parenthesis plus CIJ. Now I can use my definition again and this breaks down to the matrix AIJ plus BIJ plus the matrix CIJ and the matrix AIJ plus BIJ breaks down even further to the matrix AIJ plus the matrix BIJ plus CIJ but this is simply the matrix A that's the matrix B and the matrix C so basically we have uh, shown that a plus B plus C is exactly the same as this our nice guy over here A plus B plus C okay and that proves this second property associative property under the operation addition okay let's continue Theorem properties of zero matrices. If A is an M by N matrix and alpha is a real number, i.e. alpha is a scalar, then the following properties are true. A plus the zero matrix is simply A. A plus the additive inverse of A is simply the zero matrix, zero M by N matrix. And if alpha A equals the zero M by N matrix, then either alpha equals zero or A equals the zero matrix. Now let me prove just one of these again. Okay, let's prove property one. A plus the zero M by N matrix equals A. Proof. Let A be the matrix A I J and O or zero M N equals the matrix where all the entries are zero. Remember this zero here is a matrix. This other zero is just an entry. It's a real number. So then A plus zero MN equals AIJ plus zero. 
and by the definition of matrix addition this equals the matrix aij plus zero but aij is a real number zero is a real number as a matter of fact zero is the additive identity in r so aij plus zero equals aij which is nothing but the matrix a and this proves property one the rest of the properties are left as simple exercises for serious students same with uh, the first set of properties all the others that we did not prove in this lecture are left as simple exercises for serious students and i usually say simple exercises for serious students so whenever you see this s e f s s know that i'm talking about simple exercises for serious students okay let's continue with the powerpoint theorem Properties of matrix multiplication. If A, B, and C are matrices with sizes such that the given matrix products are defined and alpha is a scalar, then the following properties are true. Associative property of multiplication. Left distributivity. Right distributivity. And alpha into a b equals alpha a times b equals a into alpha b, which means a can go in in any order without changing the product. We would not prove any of these properties, but we'll discuss them some more in class. Theorem properties of the identity matrix. If A is a matrix of size M by N, then the following properties are true. Property number one, A times IN equals A. IM times A equals A. Remember, A has size M by N. So if I'm multiplying IN to the right of A, and it has to be of dimension n by n and if I'm multiplying the identity matrix on the left side of A it has to be of size m by m i n is the square matrix n by n for example i2 1001 that's the identity matrix all the elements on the main diagonal are 1 and 0 elsewhere Okay, theorem, which is actually recalling uh, what we've seen before. Number of solutions of a system of linear equations. We did see before that given a system of linear equations with n variables, precisely one of the following are true. The system has exactly one solution, or the system has an infinite number of solutions, or it has no solution at all. Okay, let's move on from there and introduce the idea of the transpose of a matrix. The transpose of a matrix is formed by writing its columns as rows, or we can say writing its rows as columns. Now, let's take a few properties of the transpose of a matrix. Let A and B be matrices and alpha a scalar, then the following are true. A transpose, parenthesis transpose is A. The transpose of the sum equals the sum of the transpose. The transpose of the scalar multiplication equals the scalar multiplication of the transpose. And AB transpose equals B transpose A transpose. We'll prove just one of these, probably uh, number two, property two. Okay, let me give you a little illustration on property two. We we'll recall that the transpose of a matrix is formed by writing its columns as rows or its rows as columns. So let's check out this example. The matrix A equals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The transpose of this matrix Remember, the columns will be written as rows and the rows as columns. So that will be 1, 4, 7, 2, 5, 8, 3, 6, 9. That's the matrix A and that's the transpose of the matrix. We say that a matrix is symmetric 
if the matrix is equal to its transpose, i.e., A is symmetric if and only if A equals A transpose. A matrix is said to be skew symmetric if negative A equals A transpose. Now, one problem you would see very often in uh, this class, you would be required given an arbitrary matrix to find a symmetric matrix or a skew symmetric matrix from that given matrix. Now, let's just go ahead and state this quite early in the game. For every matrix A, one half into A plus A transpose is symmetric. And one half into A minus A transpose is skew symmetric. Your task? I want you to prove that if A is an arbitrary matrix, then A plus A transpose parenthesis times one half is going to be symmetric. And also prove that if A is an arbitrary matrix, then one half into A minus A transpose would be skew symmetric. Okay, that brings us to the end of lecture 9. Thank you.